wiring. What is wiring? Well, wiring is a huge pain and a source of despair and much hair pulling. Anyways, this little guy is a Eaton Busman RTR. This Busman is a fuse panel and relay combo that will be powering most of my car. And this video is gonna cover how to wire one up. I know that many viewers are not gonna be interested in this video, but it's good to get a video out for wiring for those who are actually interested. On top of the small busman boxes, there are also larger ones that are capable of powering an entire car. This full-size box has 10 relays and 40 fused outputs. This is what my brother used to rewire his entire Volvo. Funny enough, this Volvo build is probably going to be a little bit faster than my LS1 swapped Camaro acceleration-wise, but it definitely won't outturn me. To start, I plugged the 10 terminal holes that I won't be using. These holes are used for the 5 pin relays that I'm currently not going to use. Next, I need to feed the relay with power. I'm using 10 gauge wire for this. Strip off the insulation and install the wire seal. These boxes require some custom tools and crimpers, but it's nothing that's too too expensive. It's all available online. Next, the tangless female terminal goes on. You will need a wire crimper for this. These jaws are for a Metripak 280 plug. These crimpers were about $100 off Amazon for a set that came with a bunch of different jaws. The crimp locks down the wire and the seal. So basically, these wire loops feed the relays with main power. That's five wires for five relays. So I need to supply the positive trigger side with power. These relays use about one tenth of one amp, so 18 gauge wire is perfectly fine here. So here's when things get messy. My top two relays use negative triggers for the radiator fans. The ground wires from the ECU controls the fan relays. So I need two wires to go from this box to the ECU fan wires. I used a two-way weather pack with 18 gauge wires for this. The other three relays have positive triggers so a different 3-pin weather pack is used. So each of the relay needs a positive and ground wire. The positive comes off the relay box, but the negative isn't wired to the box. So the grounds will come off the chassis via these bus bars. So now we need to make the relay output wires. 10 gauge wire does the trick. These terminals then lock into these Metripak 280 plugs, followed by the blue wire clip. The other end of the red power wire gets a tangless terminal that goes into the relay box. So the positive wire gets power from the relays and the negative ground wire is grounded via this bus bar. A 10 gauge ring terminal is used for this.
these 3M terminals have very high-end heat shrink built into them. It's pretty convenient. The wires are protected with wire sleeve and adhesive lined heat shrink. I went ahead and labeled each plug to make things easy for me. This positive wire goes into the fuse box. Then the ground is connected via this bus bar. So the bottom three relays have positive trigger wires, so they're gonna need a ground. A small 18 gauge wire is used, simply connecting the relay to the grounding bus bar. So this is a completed Busman relay box. Five relays, ten fused connections. The bus bar main power comes in from the battery and connects to the stud. That stud sends power to all the relays and fuses. The bus bar on the right side provides all the grounds. This bus bar on the left, it's connected to a 30 amp fused circuit. I'll be using this bar to power a bunch of smaller 12 volt items in my car. I'm also connecting my chassis power distribution wires off this relay box. There are two 30 amp circuits for the main power chassis wires. This three pin weather pack holds the trigger wires for the bottom three relays. And then this two pin weather pack has the negative triggers for the fans. Five relays and a ton of power options. I really like this little fuse and relay box. It's very compact and very convenient and very modular. It's time to check the relay box's function. I attached an LED light to the Metri 280 plug as a test indicator. This small rectifier provides power for the wiring panel. I plugged the LED into the first relay output. Connecting the ground to the signal cable turns on the relay. And the first relay works like it should. I ran through the negative and then the positive relay triggers, and each one of the five relays worked like it should. Next, I tested the main chassis power wires to see if they were working correctly. Both have the correct voltage, so that's a win. Then this positive bus bar gets tested, and it's showing up with the right voltage. If you want a better in-depth dive into these Eaton RTR boxes, this website has a super good write-up on everything I just did. Everything from part numbers, wires, and many good schematics. Make sure to check it out. If you liked this video, consider contributing to my Patreon. And remember to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.